Hello everybody, Jake, your resident content cowboy here. Yeehaw, it's Monday. On Mondays, we do tier lists, and on Wednesdays, we wear pink. You're driving with the driving crooner, baby. We're trying to make it look fake. Slow down. You gotta be right next to me for it to look real. You gotta be right next to me. I bet you didn't know you were driving with the driving crooner, did you? Or working with the driving crooner. I'm gonna bring you this one a little differently. We have the World Championships of Pokemon Unite coming up very soon here. So this is my take on what it is looking like competitively for Pokemon Unite right now. I would love to hear your thoughts in the comments. I normally fill it out as I go, but I've been thinking about this i've been filling it out moving some things around and i'm going to go through every single pokemon why i've placed it where i've placed it where i could be wrong where i think it's very almost impossible for me to be wrong and we are going to talk about what you are probably going to see at worlds let's do this thing slapping my knee there it's a knee slapper. Hit my knee weird on that one. First off, let's start at the top here. Not allowed due to it being Mewtwo is our first tier. That tier are Pokemon that are not allowed due to it being Mewtwo. Mewtwo resides in that tier. We have our S tier with insane priority. So these are Pokemon that are going to be picked very, very fast, I believe. We have our S tier, but with less priority. These Pokemon are going to be picked probably early but probably not first picks unless someone is very specific that they need this pokemon we have our a tier it's a strong but picked later tier we have our possible tier i'll talk about this a little bit more we have our b tier <laughs> makes me so mad makes me so mad i want to do something about it but not this week we have our will anyone play these tier we have our c tier and then we have our decidui memorial tier as i mentioned before we have our mewtwo tier mewtwo is not playable at worlds that pokemon is banned so there you go no mewtwo at worlds i was actually hoping we would see mewtwo at worlds but we did not get to see any mewtwo let's continue with our list here Let's talk a little bit about some of the tops and bottoms right here. I'll talk to you about my S insane priority tier. Slowbro, Umbreon, and Lapras are sort of the three premier defenders inside the game right now. There are some other ones that are very close that could also be picked, but I think you're gonna see Pokemon like this often picked or banned extremely early. They're all very powerful. They all serve a slightly different function, but they are three insane defenders inside the game right now. If you could ban away Umbreon from your opponents and grab Slowbro, even Slowbro and Lapras, they are going to be dealing with without question, a second rate group of defenders. However, some teams are practicing for that. We also have Pokemon like Hoopa and Eldegoss. I think Hoopa and Eldegoss are still insanely good. Hoopa might have top priority. I'm actually going to move LD down one tier. It's going to have a lot of priority in my opinion, but not as much as Hoopa. Hoopa still does things that other Pokemon wish they could do. And Hoopa, I think, will still be for a lot of teams, a top priority pick, probably after defenders or one of sort of the top carries in the game. Let's talk about a top carry in the game that I actually think will be one of the biggest difference makers at Worlds, and that's Inteleon. I think Inteleon is going to be um, one of the key factors to teams winning and losing. If you have Inteleon and you're good with Inteleon, I think you could be winning the whole thing. Uh, if you have Inteleon and you're bad with Inteleon, it might be a rough pick. If your opponents get it and they're strong with it, I think you're in a lot of trouble. I truly think Inteleon is going to be extremely impactful in this tournament and if teams are smart it's going to have a lot of priority now let's talk about this sort of next row here before we head to the bottom these are s tier pokemon but with less priority so i think all of these pokemon are insanely good they just probably won't have first pick priority either urshifu insanely good still it's just there are other pokemon up in the s tier that i think are going to take that sort of first pick slot from it i think you probably will see you know, it depends. EU still feels like they play a little bit of the Dark Bear, and then I feel like there's more Water Bear other places. I think both are insanely good choices depending on your team comp and still top tier picks. Zorark did get nerfed, but I firmly believe Zorark is still the best speedster in Pokemon Unite. I think it beats the other ones pretty handily, so I would just say if your team is good with Zorark, and don't forget, these games are going to be played 
in person on like zero ping. So if you're extremely good with a Pokemon that takes a lot of mechanical skill, you are going to dominate your enemies. Zorark, I still believe even with the nerf, is the best speedster. So that's why I'm putting it here. It's S tier, but with less priority. Same thing with Mew. Mew is great, but I just don't think it takes top priority. I think teams are going to be able to fill this into a lot of different compositions and do extremely well. Eldegoss, if you don't get Hoopa, you often get Eldie, but there are other supporters that are sort of filling that role as well. Comfey, I think, is very very powerful but on specific teams so it's all going to be dependent on whether or not your carry is so good that you need to power it up with comfey that's the real uh question here so I think Comfey won't see a ton of play, at least I would expect, but when it does, I think it's going to be extremely impactful. Same thing with this Venusaur right here. Venusaur has gotten so much love since you started uh, seeing it being used in the composition from TTV. Now just about everyone has a composition where they can slot Venusaur in for that massive solar beam unite move damage that all comes in one huge burst. I don't think you can really prioritize a Venusaur pick. That would be very odd to me. Maybe Maybe you could ban it away from your opponents if you feel like it's the only strategy that's giving you trouble. But in general, I think it's very strong, just with very little priority. You can't really get the same value out of this Pokemon in uncoordinated play, but in coordinated play, you could do some really gross things with it because it can play at extreme range. Kind of the same thing with Mew. Now let's take a look at our bottom tier here really quick before we kind of, we'll, we'll bounce around as we're looking at our tier list. The Decidueye Memorial tier, ironically, once again has Decidueye in it for a reason that I'll get to in a sec. Crustle, I just think it's outshined by other defenders. You can see teams use it, but I don't think it will be a popular pick. Zarina, while I think some teams may pick it up, I think they will absolutely regret this decision. This Pokemon is not what it was at last year's Worlds, even if players are cracked on it. This Pokemon is just not what it was. You would be much better off having one of the Urshifus on your team, having, I mean, there are just a lot of different all-rounders that kind of fill this role. Lucario's kind of risen back into prominence, so I would really advise against teams picking up Zarina. Same thing with Tyranitar. Tyranitar is just kind of a worse version of these really powerful Pokemon now. You used to have Titar, and it was set up to be sort of this late game monster, but now it feels like it's late game isn't even that good, and you have these other Pokemon that get good at level four and five, so I think Titar is just a horrible spot. Decidueye is a really good Pokemon, but it's bugged right now, and its damage is not working correctly on Spirit Shackle. If they don't fix its damage, I think it's a huge liability to pick this Pokemon. However, I hope that we're gonna get a quick bug fix for this before Worlds, and that would change the positioning here, I would put this into a possible tier right here and you would play it into specific comps without that I think you have to keep Decidueye as a do not pick right now we could talk about our C tier as well Absol Gengar just completely outclassed by the other speedsters inside the game currently some teams might grab one of them but I think it'll be kind of be a Hail Mary play and they're going to hope for something that's not really going to work out Greedon is a cool Pokemon there are a couple teams that I could see pick it up, but I just don't think compared to other defenders and other Pokemon with a ton of mobility inside the game and a ton of, you know, it used to be like kind of like only Greedent had this level of harassment, but you can do it with a lot of Pokemon now. I think Greedent would be a rough choice into most enemy team compositions. Uh, let's bop up to our A tier. So these are Pokemon that are extremely strong. They're not going to have priority. They'll probably be picked a little bit later, but they're really, really powerful. There are a couple on here, if it's your team's comfort pick, that I could see you really playing into. Let's talk about Gujar really quick. Gujar has received buff after buff after buff since it's come out. And I think right now, it is a strong pocket defender pick uh, for a team that loses their top priority defender. So if you lose your Umbreon, Lap, a slow bro if things get banned out so if one team bans bro one team bans umbreon the other one grabs lapras i actually think gudra could be a really strong choice you're just gonna have to have your team ready to pick this pokemon up trevenant could be there as well trevenant also lines up shots for a lot of your allies it's a really strong pokemon but both of these just feel sort of dwarfed by the other strong defenders but you could definitely pick it later in your draft for a lot of power Buzzwool. You're not going to see priority on this Pokemon. It's not going to be picked early, but gosh, it's so strong. 
It's so good. And if a team knows how to play around it, this thing is devastating. Buzzwell's amazing. Now let's talk about two supporters that are amazing. In the West, we have more Blissey. That's like EU, North America. I think I've seen a little bit of it, LATAM as well. Uh, so Blissey seems to be a little more popular over here, whereas it feels like in the East, I see more Clefable. I think both of these are strong choices and you really don't need to give priority in your draft to them. So you can slot them in depending on what your team composition is looking like. There are some teams uh, in the West, however, that I feel like are picking up Blissey early. You'll see that on teams like uh, Luminosity. I feel like TTV was grabbing it early. So I feel like North America really has some priority towards this Blissey right here. They feel like Blissey Comfe priority. And then when I see teams, you know, from the a lot of the Eastern regions, I'm seeing more things like uh, Clefable as a huge pickup for them because of the team-wide healing. When you look at our uh, other two speedsters here, Leafeon, Dodrio, I think both of them are great for different reasons. Leafeon has a really early power spike at level four. It's extremely good, but I also think it actually did get hurt by its nerfs maybe more than people thought. I think that Razor Leaf nerf was actually kind of considerable. And I do think as we move later on into the game, I personally would rather have a Zorark or Dodrio on my team than a Leafeon. However, Leafeon, if you can position it right, you can delete some of the squishier Pokemon on the enemy team, definitely is a strong choice. Uh, but you probably won't see it first picked. Same thing with Dodrio. I actually think, you know, the first picks are all going to go over... If, if they're smart, I think they should all go over to something like Inteleon as opposed to Leafeon or Dodrio. Uh, moving down our list here, Glaceon I think is very strong, and I think some teams are still going to be playing around this Pokemon, but I actually wouldn't be surprised if we don't see it picked very much. I think there will be a few teams that are still picking this Pokemon up, and most have kind of let it fall into the possible tier here. Alone the Ninetales, amazing. A9 is amazing, and I know a lot has changed since A9 was buffed a little while back, but it's still one of the best lane attacker Pokemon. It's so good, so strong, so difficult to deal with early. Lucario right here. Lucario is, you know, it's gotten multiple buffs. Power Up Punch, that build kind of got buffed because of close combat, right? Uh, it received a cooldown reduction. Then you have the Extreme Speed build, which when you are playing on zero latency, basically, you are going to see people pop off with this Pokemon. The only thing I'm worried about is there's a lot of shutdown in the meta right now, you know? Lapras, Umbreon, Slowbro, these Pokemon shut down something like Lucario. They don't let it really get to do what it wants to do very well. We're gonna have to see how many teams end up picking this up. And now on to Zacian. Zacian, you could argue, is up in the S tier, but I actually don't think competitively this is an S tier choice. This Pokemon feels like it does much, much better against uncoordinated or lower skill players than it does against top level players. I could be wrong, it still has that amazing trap that it can lay down with its Sacred Sword, but I just feel like this Pokemon will not be getting a ton of priority, even though a few months ago it would probably be first banned, first picked every game. I think you'd be way better off with something in the S tier than you would be grabbing uh, Zacian here. And then uh, Sylveon. Sylveon's always a good counter pick to a lot of enemy team compositions, and I could see teams picking that up, but you definitely wouldn't want to be first picking this. Now moving on to our possible tier here, Zeraora got a lot of buffs, and it's actually really, really solid. It's rough into things like Mewtwo, but it doesn't have to play into Mewtwo or anything like that. It's a weird speedster because it's bulkier than a lot of speedsters, it has great rip, and it has pretty good targeted damage with its Unite move. I actually think you could see some teams pull Zeraora out. You might not even see them play it in the central area, they might play it in path, because it only needs level 7 now to get its second move. So we could definitely see some Zera. Garchomp is kind of in the boat with like things like Buzzwool. I just think Garchomp is a little outshined by Buzz because Buzz has more control inside of the game. But Garchomp was seeing a lot of play in EU and I could see a lot of value for it. Its Unite move is very strong. When you get a Dragon Claw combo and then can Unite move into the enemy sort of squishier Pokemon, their Gardevoirs, their Espeons, Glaceons, things like that, and sort of rip them down, it, there actually is a ton of value with Garchomp. So I could see some teams slotting that into their comp. I actually am surprised. Well, this song's more intense than I thought it would be. <laughs> I actually um, would be surprised with the next three choices. I think maybe Gardevoir is currently the easiest to slot in of the three. Espeon, 
Gardevoir, Delphox, all seem to have lost a little bit of priority inside this meta, but I think they're all possible choices that you could put into a team. For whatever reason, I just feel like I never see a lot of power out of Delphox here. Like, I, I feel like Delphox is put into some team comps, and it just never seems to be the key factor for a team winning. Gardevoir feels like it, it has a little more strength there. Espeon is good in lane early, so if you don't get Alolan Ninetales, maybe you want to grab Espeon. Uh, I feel like Delphox is maybe the weakest of the three right now. Dragonite's also a real weird one. Dragonite's very strong but it feels like it's just outclassed by some other secure inside the game. Like Solar Beam is a stronger secure. You've got Snipe Shot with Inteleon. You have Wicked Blow. You have these things that you don't have to charge up. You've got Solar Blade for, you know, Leafeon, Power Up Punch Lucario. And then you have Dragonite, which seems like it could be good, but this is just one of those Pokemon where I feel like, where are you going to slot this into a team? What is your strategy around it? And we did not see much Dragonite after the Dragonite buffs. Now that it's even gotten a Hyper Beam nerf, I, I wonder if we see it really at all. Blastoise is another one that I just feel like it's always good, and I don't know if people are going to pick it up, you know? It feels like Lapras has sort of taken its job a little bit. They're not the same, but they have a lot of similar features, and Lapras doesn't need to evolve multiple times, so... I wonder if we're going to see Blastoise. Same thing with Machamp. I think Machamp is really good, and I think people good with Machamp can be really impactful. For whatever reason, I have not seen Machamp really dish out enough damage or be as impactful as it used to be. I think it's unlikely we see some Machamp, but it could be devastating. Chandelure is a weird one. I think we could still definitely see some Shandy, but I'm actually wondering if the nerfs have sort of knocked this Pokemon out of being chosen. Like, not even knocked it out of being chosen, but just sort of knocked it in here with this group of Pokemon that are all viable in different ways. Chandelure, I would say, used to be kind of like an A tier, you know, decent pick, but you didn't give it first priority. Now with the nerfs, I'm not so sure on this Pokemon. And then you have Snorlax and Mamo. I think actually Snorlax and Mamo are both good. Uh, these are also sort of off-pick defenders, so if you don't get one of your top three, you could walk away with Snorlax or Mamo and do pretty well. I'm excited to see if anyone starts grabbing Mamo and really playing with it after the nerfs, but it doesn't really have the same kind of sustain that some of the others do. One of the problems with these defenders compared to some of the top tier ones, Slowbro, Umbreon, and Lapras all have insane self-sustain. Gudra kind of has this as well. You've got a little bit on Trevenant. So not only are they defenders, not only are they able to move your opponents around, they're extremely tanky, but they can kind of fight in a self-reliant way. And Snorlax and Mamoswine don't have really as much of that. Now looking here, we've got our B tier gross and our will anyone play these tier uh i'll start with the will anyone play these tier scyther i just really have no idea where anyone will slot this into their team it it's essentially a speedster that's worse than three other speedsters so maybe even four other speedsters i don't know i don't know who's gonna play scyther it feels like a mistake to pick this pokemon up you can pop off with it but it just doesn't do enough damage in a burst right now uh and then you have all of our attack damage carry pokemon that are not decidui dragapult duraludon greninja cinderace all of these could be picked but then the big question is really will anyone play these Will anyone play an attack damage carry at Worlds? Is there any meta that really favors these Pokemon? They're not b terrible by any means. It's just the special attacker and bulkiness meta seems to be paired with a little bit of burst from speedsters. And these Pokemon feel like they're out on an island. I, I, I don't know what you do with them. You could easily see one, if not all of them, in different team compositions. But I honestly can't tell if anyone would play them. I think if I was drafting up a team, I wouldn't pick any of them. Uh, Azumarill, Scissor. Uh, both of them odd choices for all-rounders right now when you have things like uh, Lucario, Zacian, the Urshifus, Buzzwole, Garchomp. Like, I feel like they're all stronger choices. Azu is not bad. And then Scissor is very enemy team comp reliant. If they are really set up to be a brawly team with not a ton of huge special attack burst, I could see a team grabbing Scissor. But in general, I think both of these Pokemon are going to have a hard time being picked. And then there's Charizard, who I actually think it may have more value than people, than, than it's given credit for. But it's just like, where do you slot it? What, what do you want to do with this Pokemon? I, I don't see people picking up Charizard and putting it into their team compositions. I really don't. And then we have our B tier. 
These are all Pokemon that I think could see play for a lot of different reasons. Sword is actually really good. Age of Slash is really good. It's just a weird Pokemon to kind of slot in, but it's very powerful. And you could see some teams pick up Age of Slash. It's gotten some nice buffs. It's very tanky, especially in its shield form. So we'll see if teams want to pick that up. Sableye. Ugh. If you really like Sableye, you'll grab it. Um, but Sableye got nerfed multiple times. It's just been nerfed and nerfed and nerfed and nerfed. It's kind of weak right now. You can run up a very strong lead with this Pokemon, but it feels like it has trouble closing out games. And then you have Wigglytuff. Wigglytuff did get a nice buff. If your enemies don't have Umbreon, there is a shot that teams could pick up Wiggly. There definitely is. If the enemy team has Umbreon, you can't pick it up at all because its Unite move essentially becomes a reverse Unite move and it's used to destroy you, which is horrible. Mr. Mime, I feel like could really only be picked up by a couple teams. There's some power there. Power Swap has... There's use to it. You could Power Swap a very strong ally. You just have to make sure you're near them. You also could use Barrier and Confusion to really disrupt your opponents. Its Unite move is still powerful, but it just got nerfed kind of into Oblivion. So it's really hard to see a team pick this, unless it's like Nouns and they're playing one of their comfort picks. Cramorant, I actually think could see some play. I actually do. Um, especially from some, like, I know some of the Japanese teams like Cramorant. I could see teams picking up Cram. It's a weird one, but I could definitely see some teams picking it up for sure. Talonflame is a Pokemon that I could see being grabbed too. Depending on what the enemy is trying to hit you with, you know, um, you could avoid Liquidation from Inteleon. You could avoid Icicle Spear from Glaceon. There are a lot of Pokemon that just don't want to deal with the fact that you could spend so much time invulnerable and away from battle. So we could see some talent. And then we have Pikachu. Pikachu, I actually think, is an interesting sort of flex supporter attacker almost pick uh, and it does shut down a few things pretty well with either you know volt tackle or even thunderbolt you could grab some pokemon from a distance with it i just think it's going to be hard for that pokemon to get priority the whole b tier is like you can see it but i don't know exactly what they're gonna do so let's talk about some areas that I could be dead wrong on, uh, and I would be happy to see it. Uh, my AD carries, there could be some regions or teams that really decide to bring these Pokemon out and end up having a great showing with things like Dragapult, uh, Cinderace, Greninja could always make it out here. Uh, Decidueye, if they buff it, you could see this Pokemon for sure. Zarina. You could see teams play it. I think it is an absolute huge mistake for teams to pick up Zarina, but to each their own. Uh, another Pokemon I could be kind of wrong about, Chandelure. We're seeing, we could see Chandelure just jump right up and have a bunch of teams pick it, for sure. We could definitely see that. Um, outside of that, Zacian, I could be undervaluing Zacian a little bit, but the more I play as Zacian, the more I play against Zacian, I actually, I actually think it's sometimes, sometimes, hard to get value out of this Pokemon because what it does is so obvious. So I'm wondering if competitive teams are having issues with it or if they're able to set it up super well. Um, let's see. Gudra could actually do better than I think. I think Gudra has a possibility of doing better than I think. We could see mostly Venusaur being picked in the West. We could also see Blissey kind of rise up and be a bigger uh, priority pick for a lot of regions here. Leafeon and Dodrio, I think they really are in the same boat here, but I know teams are putting a lot of value into Leafeon. I can't tell. I can't tell if Leafeon is there yet or if Leafeon is just a strong choice, but it's not really going to be the game changer. For me, my money is on uh, Inteleon being one of the most important Pokemon in the entire tournament. I think Inteleon is so good, especially in a coordinated team. If you can protect this thing and you have someone who is good with this Pokemon, I think Inteleon is a game changer, as well as these top three defenders that you're seeing right here. I would love to hear from you what you think in the comments. Please let me know what you think is going to dominate worlds, what you think I'm dead wrong about, what you think I'm dead right about. I always love to hear from you as always be cool be respectful to each other but i'm happy to see people disagree and talk about what they think this meta is going to look like for worlds i cannot wait we've got like oh basically a week and a half or so left before so thanks for watching thanks for listening i love you guys very much i'll see you all next time mm -hmm.